Ace Podcast. You're listening to the Crazy Town Podcast, Season 2, Episode 1, Part 2, with Jonas and TNT Dynamite. Yo! Hey, TNT, have you ever heard of a Mexican standoff? Yeah, it's when, like, a bunch of guys have guns pointed at each other's heads or something, right? Right, kind of like uh, Reservoir Dogs, you know, that's, yeah. a, that's a classic one. But did you know that has an actual other name? It has an, a name? Yeah, it's called a truel, T-R-U-E-L. So, like, a triple <laughs> duel. <laughs> Is this some shit you just made up? No, it's on uh, it's on Wikipedia. It looks like it needs citations, so I think it should be more on Urban Dictionary. But... Uh-oh. That... <laughs> no, that's cool, man. man right. You're teaching me something. Hey. So I can't call it a Mexican standoff anymore? Unless you want to sound like a racist. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's, that's not something I want to sound like. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we've made sure that TNT Dynamite isn't a racist, enjoy the show. One, two, three. And welcome to the second part of the first episode of Season 2 of the Crazy Town Podcast. Season, or what, episode 1.5, if you will. I am Jonas, your host, as always. With me is TNT Dynamite. Say hello to everybody. What's up, TNT Dynamite here, the explosive one. TNT, D-I-N-O-M-I-G-H-T. All right. What's going, what's going on, Jonas? Oh, uh, not much, man. Just, you know, chilling and recording a podcast with you, homie. That's oh, it. Yeah. yeah, that's what we do. So we wanted to thank you all for listening today and always. Um, if you aren't following us on Twitter, at the Crazy Town Pod, uh, the cornucopia of continuous information about the podcast, thecrazytown.com. Real quick, to pay the bills, uh, TNT, do you like audiobooks? Dude. How did you know? Are you giving me one for for my birth Christmas? Day? No, but you know no. what we can give you is a free trial <laughs> of Audible, a great podcasting or audiobook listening service on Amazon. That's perfect. Yes, go to audibletrial.com forward slash crazy town podcast for a free 30 day trial, and you'll be helping us out. I think that's a great idea. You should sign up, because I know you like audiobooks. That's it. I was just helping you out. I wasn't, like, pimping anything or selling out or anything like that. No, no, but that's a good idea, because I like audiobooks some more. And anybody who does like audiobooks, they could probably put that in, too. And... Right, right, absolutely. Right. So, anyways, we have a great show for you guys today. Um, we have part two of the Sex Work BB podcast host interview with Cam Girls Shay. Taylor mm-hmm. and Kyra mm-hmm. Kane. Great mm-hmm. interview. Mm-hmm. If you haven't heard the first part, go back and check out the episode from last week. Uh, as always, yeah. we have some crazy news to talk about, you know, what we do, anything nuts like that. Um, I do want to get into some fan things before we get anything started today. Um, as we talked about in the last episode, and we will keep reiterating, we want to be the number one fan source of awesome interaction podcast out there. Please, Email us at crazytownpodcast at gmail.com. Send us articles you want us to talk about on the show. Crazy what if questions. Anything like that. Um, and we will, if we like it, we'll talk about it. We'll shout you out. And we don't want to forget about our voicemail line. The rant and rave <laughs> crazy town voicemail line. What's the number, TNT? I don't remember the first three. Five, seven, eight, no, five, wait, two, don't, seven. Don't, don't confuse them. All right. It's already confusing enough. I'm confused. Are you, everyone's confused. The number is 512. 512-TAX-1-NIP. We know you hate taxes, and we know you love nipples. Yeah. Let's do that. I it's uh, the full number, 512-829-1647. Call us in call, Drunk Dial Us instead of your ex, and or call and cuss us out. Whatever you want to do. It's great. <laughs> I do have a quick, a quick, a quick fan email that somebody Ooh. wrote in. I want to touch on because I want, I want to get some of that every episode. Um, yeah, I know. 
We have John from Syracuse, New York. He writes in, Hey, Jonas and DNT, I was just curious how you two know each other. Do you just do the podcast, or have you known each other a long time? I love the show. Keep up the great work. You guys are awesome. And he says, rockin' the socks. I'm not sure what that means, but rockin', rockin the, socks, the socks, dude. Rock it out. <laughs> yeah. Maybe so, he knows uh, me. You know me and my sock yeah. fetish. Oh, yeah. You do have a sock fetish. <laughs> so, TNT, do you want to, do you want to tell, tell them, or uh, do you want to uh, uh, Yeah, I don't know. I moved to a small town in, in, uh, in Ohio, and I uh, made friends with this one guy, and he ended up being like a nerd. So then I made friends with his older brother and then lots of, uh, and essentially I was friends with the older brother. Yeah. Lots of, lots of parties, man. Lots of parties. Yeah. So he basically met a kid. He befriended a kid in a new town, then, then left that kid in the dirt, to hang out with his older brother and all of his cool friends, which included me yeah, and everyone left else. Him in the dirt. No, he didn't leave him in the dirt. I mean, he's still, He's, he's still not a nice, you know, kind of, he, he wasn't getting me any pussy. Right. Oh, yeah, because we've got you so much pussy. I think you have me maybe one pussy in my life. From <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so basically, yeah, we went to high school together. Uh, so we've known each other a uh, while. Wow. He's a millennial. I'm not. He's the oldest, huh? oldest millennial in the world. Millennial Jackson. Yeah, whatever. Whatever, man. <laughs> How long have we known each other? It was probably... Like 20 years? Something like that? Has it been that god dang long? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Isn't it not? I've known you since I was five. It's crazy. <laughs> yes. Can't believe you were in high school at five years old. Yeah, well, yeah. Intellectual. Well, well you know. We know you are the smartest man on the planet. <laughs> wow. No, I don't know shit. Don't, don't get that started. <laughs> I don't know a damn thing. So... TNT, have you ever heard about insects carrying disease? What? what you know what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, I have, Jonas. <laughs> Where are you going with this you one? You love my segues. You love them. <laughs> you love every single one of them. Have you ever cut yourself? <laughs> have you ever self-harmed when you were sad? <laughs> Wow! No, that's, all right. That's, that's not a that's laughing good. matter. That's very. If you if you have issues with depression or self harm, please get help. Seriously, we don't we don't condone that shit at the Crazy Town Podcast. We're gonna have to get a disclaimer at the beginning of the show. There is a disclaimer on the website under about the show. So these views are the no, no, it views says, of... it says something about how it is. You know, this is just a work of fiction, even though we discuss real events and stuff like that. So we just have a good time. We're just screwing around. We care about people. And oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, dude, for sure. Like, I mean, we talk about some crazy shit, but that, deep down, we're, we're decent human beings. So anyways, there, this happened in Japan, um, Miyazaki, Japan. Um, a few residents, well, I guess more than a few, because it was, I guess it was kind of like becoming more of an epidemic, had come down with thrombocytopenia syndrome. Wow, thrombo means that it deals with the platelets. Um, cyto, C Y T O. Cyto is cell. P E I P E N I A syndrome. Penia means that they can't breathe, lack of oxygen. So it's uh, it, S F T S for short. Uh -huh. and, this, and, and they were getting this from tick bite. Huh. Yeah. Um, the fatality rate on it is 12%, and it goes as high as 30% in some areas of, like, Japan and China. Zillow research, basically the main symptoms are fever, vomiting, diarrhea. Uh, you end up getting organ failure. And here you go, low platelet counts, low white blood cells, and high yeah. liver enzymes. Okay. Basically, what they, the, the Japanese government, or I'm not sure if it was the mayor or who, who exactly, the governor or something like that. He wanted to hold a press mm -hmm. conference to bring awareness about these ticks and the disease and all this. So they, they brought some ticks with them so the press could photograph uh, photograph, could photograph them and, you know, make, put out pictures of them and, and whatever. So they brought a dead one so they could take pictures and all that stuff, but they also brought a live beetle with them. Oh, okay. All right. That doesn't sound... Was so it, like, locked up in a cup? Well, it was until they tried to move it with tweezers, and then they lost it at the press conference. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> and 
show, guys. <laughs> so it disappeared into the crowd. Essentially, a disease-ridden fucking. They're calling awareness to people can get this disease, and yet they let one loose in the press conference. Essentially, like have at it, boys. <laughs> Go. Good job. Yeah. Right. So they. Good um, job. But don't worry. Don't worry, everyone. No, oh, I'm not. They didn't find it, but they did decide later to spray the room with insecticide, and they disinfected it because you don't want anyone to get a cold. <laughs> <laughs> what? With a, a a disease with a as high as thirty percent fatality rate. <laughs> You know, don't want anybody to get a cold. Right. So make sure you spay some palm olive. Yeah, right. Some some pledge. No, the, the, the cold part was my was my was my joke. That was oh, not, they didn't really say that. But no. the the governor did come out and apologize mm. to everything. You know, so that's okay. You know, we, we released it into the into the wild, but that's okay. We're good. He said we should have been more careful about safety management as the government is in a position to alert the people. So he's more or less like, it's cool, bro. We just left the tick out that's spreading disease, killing people. No worries. Sorry. <laughs> Hindsight is always twenty twenty. Right. Right. Exactly. So I thought yeah, we that, probably should have did better. Yeah. yeah no sh- oh man. We totally should have not brought a live disease ridden tick to a festival and let <laughs> it go. So I thought that was very uh, crazy town esque. Because it was very, it's very like dope. They're like, hey, uh, hey, Jim Bob, why don't you go ahead and pull the uh, the tick out with the tweezers so the press can get a really good photo? Okay, yeah. so, that sounds really good. Uh, hey, boss, uh, the tick's missing. What? <laughs> is, is that how you think? Is that how you think Japanese people talk? Uh, <laughs> if they're dumb enough to bring a tick out, they're basically living in the hills, man. They're just like. <laughs> Any of our viewers who talk like that, <laughs> why don't you get a job handling needles? Uh, yeah, no shit, right? No, but yeah, dude, that's fucked up, man. You think like in Japan, they, I don't know, aren't Japanese people like smarter than us? I, I, I guess that sounds awful stereotypical of you to yeah, say. It's a good stereotype, though, you know, there's good ones. <laughs> yeah, 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 there is, I guess, yeah, there's good stereotypes, yeah. I guess. So, but that's that's it. It's the only story I want to touch on here in the beginning of the show. I have a real, uh, a real wrencher. I guess not a wrencher. I guess it'd be more of like a, uh, I don't know even how to describe it. The, the next one we're going to talk about in the next segment is going to be disgusting. Everyone's going to hate it, so I can't wait for that. Anyways, but before we jump out of this opening segment and get you over, TNT, do you want to do your word? It's oh. time... To learn with TNT Dynamite. Yeah, I do want to do my word. <laughs> I, love, I love doing words. Today's word with dynamite. Intergluteal cleft. <laughs> All right. You want to spell that for the folks at home? Sure. Intergluteal. I-N-T-E-R-G-L-U-T-E-A-L. Cleft. C-L-E-F-T. And what is that? This is this is <laughs> this is also known commonly as your butt crack or your <laughs> ass crack. That's awesome. So it is the groove uh, between the buttocks. So that's the technical term for yeah. ass crack. Look yeah. at you! Look at you dropping some fucking knowledge on these hoes. By hoes, yeah. I mean me and you, because our listeners are not hoes. They're very awesome people. Uh, you gave me that truel one at the beginning. I'm gonna start using that. Yeah, I'm gonna just be like, "Hey guys, you want to have a truel?" You want to play crackers and play true? <laughs> it sounds like something you'd see in a uh, homosexual porn movie. <laughs> hey, guys, you want to true with each other? <laughs> oh, Jesus, pictures. Dude, okay. In my mind. All right, I, I don't want to talk about gay porn, but no? do, you, do you think they have the same kind of scenes? Like, like the guys are all sitting around, like, in a in a dorm room, and, like, the plumber comes to fix the toilet, and, like, the same thing happens. He's all like, hey, guys, I'm here to clean your pipes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, ooh, we have some pipes that need cleaning. And, like, do you think they do the same thing? Like, I, I can't imagine. First off, this is exactly my my brand of comedy. But yeah, I think I think that they do. I think they do. I think they have little storylines. Well, you not? mentioned the homosexual, and it, like it popped in my head. Like, do they have the same the same storyline? I mean, like oh. lesbian porn doesn't have that. It isn't like they go like you know what I mean. Like, ooh, I'm here to clean the trap. And look, ooh, we have a trap you could clean. You know what I mean? It's like it's not the same sort of 
Yeah. No, I could see some bros just hanging around watching football and they order pizza, extra sausage. <laughs> <laughs> <Those> extra <laughs> anchovies like that 80s movie Lover Boy. <laughs> Do you remember that movie? Oh, sorry, I'm a, I'm a millennial. Just I don't know what you're millennial don't mean you can wa- can't watch old movies, you fuck. <laughs> No, dude, I've got to listen to Drake. Do you seriously not know what that movie is? I honestly do not Dude, that there was movie. a movie, I think it was called Lover Boy, and this dude worked at a pizza shop, and if, huh. and like there was a code, if, if they ordered anchovies, he was like a male escort, and like they would show up at their house, and he knew they wanted to like get it on. It was all these nasty rich bitches like, hey, you bought me on top? Uh, like, you know what was, I mean? Like those kind of. Was, was this like a. A kid-friendly movie? No. No, no. My parents didn't care what I watched. I watched all sorts of fucked up shit. Yeah, that explains a lot. Oh, I know, right? (laughs) Absolutely. But no, man, that's really about it for this segment. Um, We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll be right back with some more news articles to talk about before we get into part two of our interview. So we will be right back. Hi there, this is Chuck Schladroff, host of the Hungry for Laughs podcast, and you're listening to the Crazy Town Podcast. Welcome back to the Crazy Town Podcast. Jonas here with TNT Dynamite. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I mentioned it a little bit here before we went to break. Um, TNT, are you ready to hear a story that will just completely destroy your faith in humanity and make you <sighs> fucking hate everything? Let, let me brace myself. All right. All right, I'm braced. <laughs> I hear you physically bracing yourself. I do. All right, so this is, the story's a couple years old, so I don't know if it's still going on, but I imagine it is. I don't have any reason to believe it wouldn't be. There was a there was an author writing a book about Disney World or Disneyland, whichever one's in Florida. I think it's World. Mm-hmm. They discovered a pretty shocking trend of something going on at Disney. It's basically something for the the one percenters, if you will. You know, the elite, the 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 richest of the rich, the you know. Uh-huh. Douche, what, douche, what is it? Douchebags. It, they're getting black market tour guides, in quotes, for Disney. Wait a minute. Black market tour guides? Yeah, yes. Uh, don't make any guesses. I'll, 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 I'll feed you along. <clears throat> so these, these black market tour guides, they cost, uh, $130 an hour, or just over $1,000 for the entire day. Alright. What do you think may constitute a black market tour guide for Disney? You just told me not to guess. Okay, well, uh, it's, 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 it's a, it's, it's a, uh, what's, what are they called? Uh, oh, God, my God, I'm drawing a blank. The questions that you're not supposed to answer. Rhetorical, Rhetorical. questions. Yes. I don't know, Jonas. What oh, could they uh, be? I don't know, Jonas. What could a black market tour guide possibly show me at Disneyland? These families are hiring disabled and handicapped people in wheelchairs oh, and motorized boy. scooters yeah. Yeah. to pretend to be in their family to skip to the front of the line. Yeah. yeah I've heard of this before. Have actually. you heard of this, really? So, so <laughs> for the people who haven't, they have spe- like they they have special entrances, auxiliary entrances at the front of each attraction for people in wheelchairs and motorized scooters. I've never I don't know this. I've never been to Disney World. You mm-hmm. can, and if you're if you're handicapped, you can bring up to six people with you in that entrance. Wow. So so the crazy thing about this is Disney also has VIP tours that they promote. And they have fast passes, which get you to skip, which let you skip the line. Not as quick as the handy well, lane. Not only that, those passes and VIP trips run between three hundred and ten and three hundred and eighty dollars per hour. Oh wow, really? So this you can have you can so you're hiring a disabled person to hang out with you all day for a thousand bucks, or you can pay three hundred eighty dollars an hour to fast pass. Hmm. Yeah, Isn't definitely, that- definitely. A discount. I mean, isn't that fucking terrible, dude? It, you know, it's 
awful, but like, who, I mean, like, who, it, who's but worse it, here? But do the, the, do the vendor, handicapped people get the money? I mean, I'm sure there's not like a, a like a human trafficking oh, no, for oh, handicapped no. it, it, people. Dude, I haven't got that to that part yet. But oh, there's more. There, oh, there's more. Like so, this service it said was so discreet. There, it's they don't have like a published phone number that these rich bitches pass it around like the soccer moms pass it around within their communities. When you call the phone number, they ask you who referred you before they'll even discuss anything with you. So you have to know that Joan Smith has been a previous customer, and she gave you the phone number, and that's why you're calling, and Joan Smith is your referral, before they'll even tell you anything about anything about anything. I don't know if it'd make it worse, or if it'd make it better, is that if, like, the guy, the head honcho, the CEO, was, like, some dude in a wheelchair. Uh, eh? Funny thing you mentioned that. It's okay. Here we go. So there was like they said they found a guy who I didn't I didn't get his name because fuck it. He, I don't want to give the guy any publicity about this. This is disgusting. But um they reach out to the guy who ran it. Obviously he didn't respond, but um mm. but his girlfriend I guess is in a, is in a motorized scooter. She's not like mentally disabled, she's physically disabled in some way. Mm-hmm. And uh so sh- so they 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 don't know, but they think she may be one of the guys who does oh. it. So that's that's kind of probably where it started. Is she was like, you know, I can get into all these rides. Why don't we hire me out as a guide for Disney, and I'll pretend to be their aunt or their mom or their sister or whatever. She gets to ride the rides for free. And the rich people get this. Right. So if they, <sighs> do, if they did that every day of the year... They would make a thousand dollars a day through the whole. That's three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Oh my god, that's good money. Yeah, no shit, right? But I mean, it's it, but they even tried to reach out to Disney about this, and Disney mm-hmm. didn't, and Disney didn't respond either. Go figure. Um, so of let course, me ask man. you. So let me ask you two questions. Okay. The, the first one is: Do you think there's other places that do despicable things like this? And if so, where? I mean, wow. obviously, probably like Six Flags and uh, Kennywood and Kings Island and all those like um, Cedar Point. They may do something similar, you know, but not like through the park. Obviously, through like a black market, whatever. Do you think? I mean, can you think anywhere else that they, that may have something like this? Uh, off the top of my head, no. You know, it's kind of funny, like. Like, the first thing that, that popped in my head was, like, you could rent, rent, like, a black dude take you through, like, a bad neighborhood or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Look. Do you feel unsafe know. going through the hood? Where's this guy? <laughs> he'll take you in. He'll introduce you, know, you to everybody. Like, yeah, maybe, yeah, I think I would probably do that. You I, get, yeah, like, T-Bone, the couple. crack dealer, to fucking, like, escort you through the hood and introduce. This is where I shot the man who didn't pay me for his 8-Rock. This is where my hosts stand. They got the best DJs in town. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't really find it. It's it's hard, man. Because yeah, is it unfair? Absolutely. Um, is it unfair for Disney to sell their premium tickets at such a high rate? Absolutely. Is it unfair that only certain people get to take part in it? Absolutely. But it's unfair. Is it illegal? No. No, it's despicable. And if the, the handicapped people, she's running a legitimate business where. They, these people are taking home a decent check. Then I mean, come that's on. true. I mean, we talked about the woman selling a uh, pregnant positive pregnancy test on Craigslist <laughs> back in episode six. Great episode. Go back and check out episode six. And you and you commended her on being, <laughs> an, being entrepreneur an entrepreneur and being a salesman. So <laughs> how is uh, that different than than this than this woman slanging yeah. handicap people to fucking pretend <laughs> to be your brother? Sling and handy. I don't, you know, look, I honestly, honestly don't know. I, I'm, I'm not, my stomach's not churned. Right, I'm right, more right, conflict, right, right. Conflict. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, here's my second part to this. Do you think Disney's in on this, secretly? I think they're secretly letting it happen. Right. Right. I mean, like, 
you have this is to not bring, a Duke development. Like, man. like, okay, like I understand that like people bring people handicapped to the the the, the park all the time. You know what I mean? They get them out that I mean to enjoy stuff. You know, I get it. But do you think that every single one of them has six friends? Do you think that their friends and like <laughs> if that their friends and family don't take advantage of this? You know, like hey, we're taking we're taking Susie to the park. Hey, get your cousins. We're all gonna go and ride with Susie, and we get to go in first because Susie, see, Susie has has her mechanical chair or whatever. You know what I mean? Like people do that like innocently all the time. And and you, you're not gonna be the guy to fucking call them out. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, let me see a blood test right now. Like some rent cops. Like, excuse me, bitch. Pop them tits out. I gotta see if you're related. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize you could determine relation through uh, a breast it was examination. An old, it's an old joke I heard a long time ago about someone trying to tell if a mom and daughter were related. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pop your tits out. I'll go double or nothing on those jokers. Was, I don't know where he gets it from, one. people. <laughs> I don't know. But all right. Yeah. Anyways. All right. From, from total despicableness to something that's actually pretty sweet. Your comments know. were the most despicable part of it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> I was speaking as if I were the crony security guard, not that I would really make them pop their tits out. You basically just ordered a handicapped girl to take off her shirt. Oh. You're a terrible, <laughs> terrible person, Jonas. You said it would be a shame if the security guard <laughs> called them out, and I was speaking as a character if I was the handicapped girl getting confronted by a... You were right. My stomach is churned now. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. All right. I'm a piece of shit. Da, 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 da. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> Anyways, let me tell uh-huh. you a story, TNT, about a small town in California. All right. Name of this town is, it's a, actually, it's a very small town. It has a population of 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sits on the California-Nevada border. Small. And and what's so special about this town? It's called Nipton, by the way. N-I-P-T-O-N. Uh-huh. Uh, this isn't why it's special, but a side note, uh, it was included in the game... Fallout New Vegas. It was like recreated for that game. Yeah, I knew I recognized that name. Yeah, it was, yeah. So, anyways, but it it was just sold for five million dollars. A town of twenty people. Right. It has one hundred and twenty acres. It uh, includes a school building, a hotel, mineral baths, and a general store. Mm-hmm. So, who bought this tiny town? Do you think who who do you think would buy a town like that? <laughs> I don't know, somebody with fucking $5 million. It's a company called American Green. They're growing reapers? It is absolutely a weed manufacturing company. And they plan to turn it into like a marijuana tourist destination. Oh, oh really? Like, like Weed Town USA. Good for them, man. Right. It uh they and they also plan they they plan to invest two point <clears throat> five million more dollars into the city to make it more tourist friendly and eco friendly. They're gonna make it run on all renewable energy sources to power the town. Yeah. And they're gonna I imagine have grow sh- I imagine they're probably gonna grow stuff there, probably have like, you know, just like food places that you know, rest I mean, they're gonna build it up into like a marijuana tourist destination. Uh, I like that idea. I think I like that's that actually idea. really fucking cool. It, it, you know, it's almost like a, it'd be like a brewery tour, you know, for beer, but it, you know, I'm sure they'll show you the gross. They can do like pot tours and, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> pot tours. Pot tours. <laughs> Are they going to have a mascot? Yeah, it's just a giant fucking guy in a, a bong. Like, it's just a, a bong guy. suit. <laughs> I don't know. It's like towely, but it's a bong suit. It's like, <laughs> Don't forget to bring your lighter. <laughs> I'm Bing Bong the Bong. Yeah, the <laughs> Bill, water pipe. Bill, Bill Bong the Bong. <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna fucking, yeah, that's gonna be the town's slogan. Don't forget your lighter. <laughs> that's a good idea. So, but I thought that was a super cool idea. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm totally pro marijuana. I think it, it should be legalized across the whole country, whether you know, whether my. I personally partake or not, even, I, I just think it has so many positive things, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
We're gonna have to take uh we're gonna have to take one of our uh podcast paychecks and uh invest in that. Oh, that would be great. Or we could do a podcast on location from Nipton. Yeah. That'd be sweet. I'm gonna start a Kickstarter right now. Maybe yeah, there you go. Some... I'll uh I'll look into that. I'll try to reach out to the company and see what their plans are. Maybe I can try to set something up where we go to like a, a bar or restaurant there and on a trip and do a live a live podcast from the restaurant or something. That'd be pretty sweet. So, but anyways, I wanted to follow up like the most despicable story that we've probably ever done on the podcast. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. There's a lot of stuff we've talked about. Can you think of anything more despicable than, than the handicaps? People being like, <laughs> whoa, being so whoa, whoa, do not put a comma there. <laughs> Don't put the comma. There. It's all about where you pause. God, oh my God. <laughs> it really <laughs> <was>. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so terrible. Punctuation. <laughs> Jesus Christ, if anybody is listening, believe me, I've worked with handicapped people for the majority of my life, oh and my I have nothing but the utmost respect, Jesus. and Jonah shared. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. I, I paused at the worst possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, Jonas, I can't think of anything worse than the exploitation of handicapped individuals. I just... That would be awful. <laughs> I can't even catch my breath. I'm crying. Oh God! They talk about it's like it's like they talk about the thing where like you go if you say let's eat kids or you say let's eat kids. <laughs> it's totally yeah, yeah. it's totally a comma. It's totally a comma fucking matters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that I've oh wow, <laughs> need to catch my breath on that one. All right. So coming up next is the second part of the interview that we had with the Sex Work BB podcast hosts and webcam models. So we hope you guys enjoy that, and we will be right back. The Crazy Town Podcast. Hey everyone, it's Eric from Crossover University. You're listening to The Crazy Town Podcast on Ace Podcast Network. <laughs> We are back on the Crazy Town Podcast with the hosts of the Sex Work BB Podcast, Kyra Kane and Shay Taylor. Welcome back, guys. Hey! Thank you! Thank you so much! <laughs> All right. So, I want to ask you guys, um, you know, being being a, a sex worker or a cam model, obviously, you guys do this from a studio or your home or wherever, but, you know, there is the danger of, you know, stalkers and, you know, that kind of stuff. Because of what you do, people get crazy about people who get naked. It's just, I mean, it's just what happens. So, I mean, have you had any situations that made you feel really unsafe, or have you had a real stalker or anything like that that's been a real negative experience with this? Um, I think, and she might be the same thing. My biggest issue is, like, and I'm super upfront with people, very upfront. Like, I had somebody message me the other day, and they're like, I'd really like to get to know you. And I was like, well, cars on the table, we'll never meet. I'm cool with getting to know you. I have friends that I've known for years, and the only way we'd meet is if you stopped by at a sex convention and wanted to take a picture, do like a small meet and greet, and then you go on your way and I go on my way. And he's like, that's really closed-minded of you. And I'm like, this is my job, friend. Like, this is what I do. And that's probably – and the biggest issue is like talking to somebody a lot, and then they grow feelings. And get really attached and are okay with the fact that it's only going to be virtual. And that's, right. and so they're like, for me, I have a P.O. box that is not where I live. Right. So I like drive to a P.O. box. I'm so, I think Shay, I don't know. Well, you don't, don't notice a, on the podcast, you don't even say what state you're in. You just say Midwest. You know what I mean? So it's state? like, yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's even more vague than, mm -hmm. you know, than a whole state. Because what's the Midwest, right? Right. 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 Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of different states in the Midwest. And people so. like to guess because people say I have, like, an accent. A lot of people guess that I'm from, like, Minnesota or Wisconsin. Yeah. So I won't say. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I, totally, yeah, I totally get it. It only makes you safer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we, I'm sure one I mean, day gonna be. Well, and like Kyra and I are like, I mean, we're best friends. You know, we talk every day, and we just learned each other's real names like not that long ago. And it was kind so, of an accident that we, yeah, that you accidentally yeah, stumbled upon things. each other. Right, right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah that's awesome um, though. I haven't had a stalker. I had a guy when I very, very first started camming that 
was really, really pushy and like would not take no for an answer and was really kind of creepy. I was like, he could be dangerous. And I ended up like stopping camming and changing my cam name. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I lost him. Luckily, I think I more deal with, um, I do a lot of like girlfriend experience. And so I end up with a lot of guys who get really, really attached. I was going to say that sounds like that would be dangerous because it almost promotes those sort of feelings to those guys, even though it's fake. That's what they want you to do. They want you to promote those feelings. Well, right. Yeah, Yeah, I get get that part. Yeah, so I would think they would fall um, easier for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they do. You know, like I I just lost – I mean, there's been a guy that's um, support – he was the one that supported our podcast – we, you know, he was like, I finally had this realization that like, we won't ever be together. And I was like, uh, like, uh, what, uh, y- like, I don't even know what you look like, dude. You know, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And so like, it, it just, it, it, it's mostly that where they're just like, mm-hmm. and they're not, they don't get it, you know? Um, and when you tell them like genuinely, like we're friends, like I care about you, you know, like I, I want well for you, but I, don't want to marry you, mm-hmm. you know, and, and being that I'm single, I think that it probably promotes that even more because, you know, sometimes I'm like, if I was married, they would get it, you mm-hmm. know, or at least hopefully get it. But being that I'm single, it's like, but then, but then on the other side, if you tell people that you're married or you have Might somebody, not be as popular. you're right. not going to get those clients because they're looking for a girl who... I potentially but you'll get other it. clients that like the cuck stuff, and they like thinking that like they're the other guy yeah, in right. your yeah. relationship well, in your marriage. Word. Yeah, cucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I'm yeah. like, do we date? Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. I live in a small town, and at what point do you tell your date you're a cam model? Right, right. I tell them up front. Well, okay, I but, that's the best but way then, to do it, probably. Okay, but then if you don't work out, then what? Dude knows you're a cam model, and he's gonna tell who. You know, like Hopefully you live in a small town. A client. Right. He's like, I, he's like, oh man. He's like, I'll just have to pay now. <laughs> like, he's like, I never got it in. I never got it in, but I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Do you tell well, them your I, real name when you when you date them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know any of these people from online, and I don't date a ton of people. I have like one or two people that I date like exclusively, and I I let them know that my job is kind of my boyfriend too. Like right. I work a lot. These guys are kind of like a part of my life. Right. Um, what I do. And now the podcast is a whole other branch of my boyfriendness, And that takes a lot of time. Yeah. So does this industry working like this and dealing with like people, you know, cause you deal with a lot of people who have true feelings for you, even though you don't reciprocate, does it make having an intimate relationship with someone hard uh, outside of canning? Um, Sometimes. I mean, I've had it where, like I said, it, you kind of become desensitized to it a bit. You know, it's uh, it's kind of a whole nother experience having somebody actually here for you. But I, I deal with a lot of like insecurities that like they're worried about my job. Right. That makes sense. Like where I put that onto them and and it's just my own fears that like they hate what I do, even though they're like, no, I'm fine with it. You know, but you're like, how do you how do you not have an issue with it? Like I get naked for like thousands of men, you know, like (laughs) that's your girl. But I like am so I have an issue with um, jealousy. Like I'm not a jealous person. Yeah, me neither at all. all. And I'm decently flirtatious in general. Like I could be at mcdonald's ordering my burger and i'm still going to be extremely friendly and i'll joke around with them and like that's just who i am and so i think it'd be really hypocritical of me like if i was dating somebody and then, like they're flirtatious and i'm like well fuck this shit like <laughs> it just so for me if somebody is jealous of like me doing my job it's just not gonna work But, you know, you would think for a guy to be comfortable with dating someone who's in the sex work industry they would have to um, either, well, either you would think they either have, like, an ill intention of some sort or, like, they're just, they're, they have to be pretty open and decent, you know, like, progressive-minded people because they know you're doing this, you know what I mean? They have to be okay with, well, uh, we're going to hang out this afternoon, then after that she's going to go home and get online. There's going to be a thousand guys throwing money at her to do whatever. Well, he didn't even leave while she can He took oh, a nap okay. while she can He's <laughs> watching TV in the living room while she can yeah. Yeah. Right. So, you know, so I mean, it's just a whole different, I mean, but, but I mean, like that experience doesn't fit a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys would not be able to do that or would not be able to have 
jealousy or be mad about it or whatever. But like you said, that's your income, man. Like, who, who are you going to choose? Your job, which you make tons of money, or some dude? You know what I mean? Like, obviously. Right. Right. And I feel like I've become a whole lot more open-minded. And so, like, I don't – somebody who's not going to be open-minded about it is not really somebody that I want to be with anyways. So – it makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. So has, has this job helped you grow as a person at all? And, and if so, in what way? Yeah, it's challenged my thinking a lot. Um, I, I was very religious. Um, I worked for a church, very close minded. Um, and so it, it's challenged me. And this podcast has, I mean, my friendship with Kyra, every, like, like she said, we don't agree on everything and mm-hmm. we challenge each other. Like, well, what the heck? Why are like, that's the, this, this is how I feel about it. And it's like, Oh, like you're, you're right. You know? And so it has, it's helped me with, I, I'm super shy, super shy don't I don't like people I don't like talking to people um and so it's it's the crux of what you do isn't it (laughs) yeah yeah all right yeah and and I so it's helped me in person to do it because it's fine like I feel like I have like the computer to hide behind um most cam girls are very anxious antisocial people believe it or not Huh. Well, that makes sense because you have almost it's like the the video camera or the cam is almost like a wall. You know what I mean? Like it's your own wall to like they're mm-hmm. out there, they're not here. But they're then if you go public, the you're like, oh my god, mm-hmm. like there's so many people. What's going on? I'm anxious. Yeah. Whatever. I guess I can see that. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. What about what about you, uh, Kara? Um, I feel like I've grown a lot, and it's more um when I got out of my marriage, it was decently abusive. Um, physically and mentally, and so, like, I came out of it, and I had PTSD pretty bad, so, like, relationships were really hard for me. Um, just having friends was really hard for me, because I wasn't allowed to have friends when I was married. I wasn't allowed to have things of my own. I wasn't myself anymore, and so um, when I got out of it, I started serving, and I, like, joked around with people, and I got to know people, and people really affirmed that I was a good person, and they affirmed that I was funny, and um, or I was pretty and all this stuff. And it kind of, then I started to cam and like, it was even more affirmation. Like people like me for my personality mm-hmm. more so than my look sometimes. And that like, it made me confident with who I am and it helped my anxiety that I'm my own person now. Like I feel like myself for the first time in seven mm-hmm. years. And I feel mm-hmm. like nobody can control that and nobody can make me be somebody I'm not. And then like, I meet Shay and honestly, like doing this podcast and getting to know Shay, like it helps having somebody there that completely understands what you're going through mm-hmm. on good days and on bad days. And not even just through like camming, like in real life stuff, like I can shoot the shit with her about my kids, you know what I mean? Because I trust her. And that's some, cause this, we say it on the podcast that this job can be very, lonely. I was going to say lonely. Yeah, that yeah. was the word and, I was going to use. And, it, and it's like, as as much as you have a, a bunch of people watching you, talking to you, I can see how it would be lonely. Because on the other end of the camera, you're by yourself. You're, you know what I mean? And like you said, it's competitive. Girls are catty. They're ruthless. They're backstabbing. You know what I mean? Like, they all want to get up, be the next top model, you know, that, you know, so to speak. You know, mm-hmm. so I could see that happening. Absolutely. Well, and it's unfortunate because, like, and we say this on the podcast, too, if we work together... Like, because I know, like, a handful of top models that they're, like, be a top model. Come after me. Like, come get me. And they're not being mean about it. They're, like, they want you to be successful. They want you to Mm -hmm. bust your ass so hard that you try to catch them. And then there are other models that are kind of, like, bitches, and they're really rude. And, like, I think one reason that we're doing this podcast is because we don't want, like, those girls suck. You don't mm-hmm. need to be friends with those girls. And, like, even though you're lonely, there's a hundred other girls that aren't like that. And that when you say, I want to film three videos tomorrow, that they're going to message you and be like, what's going on with those videos? Mm-hmm. How many videos did you do? Like, they're pushing you to kind of be the best right. verse. I think when you start in this industry, you almost are, like, you're looking for a mentor. Um, right. You're looking for, because there's no, like, how-to guide on Mm -hmm. how to be a cam girl there. I mean, you can like, there's a few, there's, um, some YouTube uh, videos. Yeah. Miss lollipop. She does a great, um, blog. Uh, gosh, what is her? Why am I cam model express? I know she has a bunch of stuff out. Builder and a little, yeah. Um, 
Cam Girl Cuties is out there, but it's for the most yeah, part, like, for, um, yeah, um, you can't, like, you're, you just don't know where to start. Um, and so I remember look, like, looking at some of the top models and being in awe of them and then meeting them at the convention and finding out that they were, like, the most shallow, bitchiest, awful people in the entire earth. And, and you hear that from a lot of girls where they like mm-hmm. have this like aha moment of like this girl that they like idolized in the industry. And then she ends up being this terrible person that really wants them to like quit. Y- you-, you become really deflated. Um, mm-hmm. And so for us to like kind of give to be those mentors to girls and and be true and be honest and be real that we're like really here to help. Like if you need something, shout out, like call her at Sex Work BB. We're we're going to do our best to try to help you. You know, we may not have all the answers, but um, we'll find somebody who does have the answers. Yeah. And be that mentor for people, because cool. it's it's so lonely when you first start. You just don't even know. Uh, going off what you what you said there, you know, you said that, you know, these these cam models look up to, to to these these high level girls and then and then they meet them or get to know them a little better and realize they're awful people. That kind of goes across all industries, though, because, you know, even like. Uh, kids There's who look one. up to kids who look up to baseball players or whatever, and they I want to do this, and then they meet them and they're an asshole. They're like, oh my, it like shatters your world because you you yeah. hold them at such a high level, and then you're like, oh my god, they're awful people. Like this sucks. Is everyone in this industry an awful person? You know what I mean? So I get that. That makes a lot of sense. I remember when I saw the top model that I like was like, she is amazing. Like she's a businesswoman. She's doing the smart. She's putting money away. She's investing in buying houses and all this stuff. Like this is who I want to be like. And then on Twitter, she was like bullying people. And I was like, I don't want to be like her at all. Right, you know, right. like I felt totally deflated that like this person that I thought was wonderful was not at all. Yeah. It was, it sucks. Yeah. You spoke on there's no real how to guide to become a camera model i feel the same is very true in podcasting there's a lot of like (laughs) how to how to start a podcast how to get your stuff up get it on twitter itunes blah 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 but one thing i love about podcasting the most is it is a open canvas you can do whatever the fuck you want you want to have a sex work podcast you want to have a podcast about like ours where we talk about weird shit all the time it's Mm -hmm. just finding your niche you know but i feel a lot of people just copy each other you know there's a million movie podcasts and music podcasts and whatever so it's finding your you know, your your place in the industry to, to make it successful. You know, I think you guys have a great spot because how many sex work by sex workers podcasts, you know what I mean? It's great, you know? Yeah, yeah, we are it that, mm-hmm. that we know of, that, we, that we're yeah. aware of, so. So, I mean, that's really awesome. And like us, I mean, we just talk about weird shit, so there ain't no, <laughs> we, no most Basically. people. That's why you invited us on. All right, I see. <laughs> yeah, weird shit. You know, but, you weird know, I wanted shit. to start something that, like, the, you know, the part of the world that, you know, weird, weird, unique jobs, weird, unique lifestyle, you know, anything that's yeah. different can get a voice, you know, it's not like, not because you're an actress in Hollywood or whatever, you know, so, I mean, I just wanted to be able to. This is a no, topic you... that especially resonates with me, too. <laughs> this boy just... is all about porn. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look, it's all, I just, I just want to make sure that people know that you are human beings. And that, you know, we need to normalize that this is a part of our culture and it needs to be normalized a little bit. So, you know, mm-hmm. you're people, you, yeah. Lead, yeah. you lead normal lives, you go to school, you raise your children, you go to PTA mm-hmm. meetings. People need yeah. to know that shit. Yeah. Right. You're, you're not like some, some weird person because you do sex work for a living. You know what I mean? You're a normal person mm-hmm. just like us. Instead of going to a, a nine to five, you pick your hour. You're an entrepreneur. Right. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of, exactly. I mean, we talk about it a lot on the podcast, like, it's, there's a stigma that, like, we're all broken, that we're all here because we're forced to be, or we have to be, or, you know, we have daddy issues, and that's why we, you know, are, like, looking up to be accepted by others, and and it's totally, I mean, we, we have our issues, I mean, I, I say we both buy. have daddy issues, but yeah. that's not why. Yeah, that's not <laughs> why I'm a sex <laughs> worker. <laughs> right, right, right. I imagine, you, like you said, your client, your clients come and go. You know, you said, like, if you take a couple weeks off, they'll just mi- migrate or whatever. I imagine you have consistency with a few people. Yeah. You know, somebody, you know. Now, if you're if you're running, like, if you know, say you have, say you have a few guys that are constantly working with whatever, and they, something happens, they fall offline, you don't hear from them. I mean, do you oh. actively search new guys, or do you let them come to you, or how do you find new clients? I mean, do you? Do you, you cry know? first, usually. <laughs> Oh, don't cry on cam. You cry. Well, no, like, you have somebody that, like, come, you meet them, and then they come into your life, and they drop, like, $3,000, they buy you a ton of gifts, and then they're gone. 
like two weeks later, they're gone. And like, I think a lot of girls count on that too. Like they, like they, um, like I have a, I have somebody who helps me probably 80% of my weekly income, but I am totally prepared that at any point he might disappear. You know, and, and I have a backup plan. Like I well, have to, will like, then have to cam more, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, but girls put all their eggs in one basket and they're like, oh, I have this dude that gives me a thousand dollars a week to do this, this and this and this. They're like, oh, I'll just keep counting on that as my mm-hmm. income. And then he disappears and they, what do you do? They they don't know what to do to recover that thousand dollars a week. Well, right. I went to business school. So, I mean, they teach you. You can't put all your eggs in one basket because if like yeah. more than 50% of your revenue is coming from one source, one day that source may not be there anymore. And then what are you going to do? You know, so mm-hmm. it's, so it's, you know, it's, it's great. I mean, but when you, when you realize that your consistency is going down, I guess, from certain people, do you, do you try to find new people to be consistent with or do you just let it be natural? They want to keep coming back or whatever. I'm not sure how we'd find, you can't really. Find Find people. Clients. And if you're finding somebody, that means you're probably scalping them from somebody else. Like you found their information because they're like dogging on another girl. Like they're like all about this other girl. And like, Mm -hmm. so you like message him. If you want to find new people, you just need to work 10 times harder than you were. Gotcha. Um, like if I needed to, to get some new regular customers, I would be more available. Yeah. I would be on Snapchat more doing more takeovers. I would be mm-hmm. on, um, social media, time. social media. Yeah. I would, you know, I, for a while there, there was like two months where I would put out 10 new videos a week. And, yeah, and I was so, doing like 14 at the time. Yeah. So like, just to like, try to gain some new video sales and things like that. And then you just, you keep doing that. And eventually you start gaining regulars right. um, through right. customer service. You know, we message everybody that buys a video from us. I've been really sucky about it because some are suck, but um, you know, just good mm-hmm. customer service to those people and they keep coming back. Um, and eventually you just, you, you hope one of them's a whale and that, you right. know, mm-hmm. now uh, you real quick, uh, you mentioned Snapchat takeovers for the people out there who don't know what that is. Can you give a quick, breakdown of what that means so they understand what you're talking about man i wish this one cam model we knew was here because she's got a real like down pat way to explain it we have like an hour-long interview on snapchat do you do you work someone else's snapchat account or a site snapchat account and a promoter's account yep for 24 hours okay Mm -hmm. and then you just post yourself and talk and pimp and pimp your sites and your all that sort of stuff yeah, exactly. a lot of people will play, right, they'll play games, so they'll be like, go to this site and buy a balloon, and then inside the balloon will be like, you win five videos, you win their Snapchat for four months, this and this and that. Okay. So, All right, so that's like the, the, the very bare bones explanation mm-hmm. of what it is. Yeah, so. it's like a cam room on Snapchat almost. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, they'll pay yeah. you to, like, do spank, they'll pay you to take shots, to smoke, they'll pay, you know, I mean, it's it, it varies. Uh, off topic question, Shay, you said you're a gamer, what is your favorite game to play right now? Um, I do a lot of role playing. Um, so I do Grand Theft Auto role playing and Ark role playing is are yep, are my two big ones right now. Alright. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, Kyra, do you play games at all, either even offline when you're not when you're not uh camming? She has one where with Overwatch where her and another girl control their Yeah, that's mine. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, um, and we really, yeah, like we right. played Overwatch and controlled each other's vibrators. See, there's an app on your phone that you can um, control a vibrator that somebody else has remotely. Oh, um, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and so we did that with each other. Yeah, that's Overwatch. Fun. I'm a. I've played World of Warcraft for like 12 years, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of kind of. Yeah, I like comic books a lot. I like music a lot. I like to read. Oh, you, Those are the things to. that I do. Me. I listen to a little bit of everything. Like, I like a lot of, oh, my gosh, it's really right, good. I, ha- I, don't I, like your, con- yeah. I don't like country, and I don't like R&B. Because when I hear country, I'm sad, and when I hear R&B, it reminds me of, like, some 90s movies where they're, like, getting down. And uh, you know you. what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah, like, like, like the Boys in the Hood sex scene exactly, when they play, like, the R- yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, I got you. So we did this this question on our Get to Know the Host episode. Top three CDs that you can listen to from front to back without stopping of all time. Oh, my gosh. I'm not a huge music. I listen to music, but I don't ever feel that passionate about any any music. It's really weird. I If we hop into your Prius and we turn the key, turn up the radio, what are we going to hear, Shay? 
probably something that my children have put on. It's really sad. So like, like the Wiggles, Raffy? Oh, no. Wiggles. No. That's, no, they're teenagers. So, you know, the, the top, the top 40 is Will big. Uzi Vert. Um, yeah. I have to really like, check myself sometimes. My son will put on music and I'm like, you can't twerk to that in front of him. Like, <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like this instant reaction. Some songs, you know, they just you have to twerk to them, or I have twerked to them, and they made me good money. Right, right, <laughs> like, right. That's what you oh. have to think about constantly. That's what you yeah. think about when you hear it. <laughs> right, yeah, right. right. Kyra, what about you? What, 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 what do you listen to? What do you? What are your CDs? You got a top three, a favorite um, song? I have a some print. So, like, um, I really like this band called Borns. They sing the song Electric Love, which I'm sure you guys have heard. It was on, like, like the pop stations and stuff. I like a band called um, Steely Dan. Oh, Steely is, Dan. Wow, old, old school. school. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it's hard for me to pick just a couple. I like Morphine a lot. Morphine. What is your, like, favorite drug, CD of yeah. all time? Like, your whole, <laughs> the whole the drug morphine. Like, if you had to pick a CD, <laughs> do you have any favorite CD, like, a, of a whole CD that you used to listen to? That I could just listen to the whole time? Yep. Yes, Roundabout. Roundabout. Is that the band or is that the CD? Yes is the band. Yes Roundabout the band. is the CD. Oh, yes. Like, the 70s rock band, <laughs> yes? Yeah. Look at you. Like, yeah, going old school. <laughs> Yeah, I remember, like, uh, Yes, Fragile, I think, is one of their CDs they have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. TNT's like, I got <laughs> no nothing about it. I like a lot. I like no Pink idea. Floyd. See, like, 80s rock. 80s, 70s rock stuff. I Old also school. like 90s. Like, I like Alice in Chains a lot. I like... Um, three-legged dog. Yeah, the three-legged See, dog. I like um, Sublime... Yeah, okay. Sublime's good. Mouth Kings, like oh, you have very boy. wide musical <laughs> taste. I love music. ICP, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very widespread too. My, my, uh, my, my mom used to work at a music store when I was a kid, so I've heard, I go from, yeah. you know, rap to R and B to rock to whatever I like. You know, if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. <clears throat> Another random question. I don't know if you listen to or get to know the host show, but or wait, maybe this wasn't even on there. If you guys could put two animals together and make a new animal with logistics not being a problem, like so, like what animal would you make? <laughs> yeah, I'll these t- are the hard hitting we'll, questions. We'll, we'll, we'll tell I you know, ours first. Serious shit right here. We'll tell you okay. ours first, so that way okay. you guys have time to think. TNT, why don't you tell them the super imaginative one you came up with? Are you talking about my my dragon? Would he he goes, I'll create a dragon. I'm like, that's a, is that's there a, mythical a, creatures? No, Are we allowed See, that's no. What I, was, so, I was confused. I wouldn't no. put a lizard and and the dragon, the dog dragon from the never ending story. <laughs> I did. I, I did. I that. My first one was a horse and a che- a horse and a cheetah. I have some what crazy horse cheetah monster. What we call it, a heeta or a chorse? And then uh, a, a mosquito and an alligator. So you could have like a, a mosquito with like an alligator head and the mosquito like blood uh, sucker. That sounds awful. <laughs> like, are we supposed to pick like what we want? Know? Is it supposed to have a good resolution or is it supposed to be something awful? Like, Any, am I anything to... you want. Anything you want. Just mix something together. Something you think would be cool it's to see. To your twisted I'm, imagination. I for some have always been really obsessed with monkeys. I don't okay. know why. And kangaroos. So I don't know how the logistics Whoa. of that all oh, would work that would together. Awesome. That is fucking but, metal. Like, but what kind of monkey? Like a chimpanzee or like a baboon or like a gorilla? Uh, small monkey. So, so like a, a like spider a, monkey, a and a, monkey and a kangaroo? <laughs> yeah, like the ones that you see at the zoo and they're like flipping around from tree to tree, you know? I don't know yeah, how yeah. that... <laughs> kangaroo legs? Yeah. When I When I pressured TNT, he came up with a really good one. He said he wanted to mix gorillas and monarch butterflies, so you'd have gorillas with monarch butterfly wings flying oh around. Oh, my gosh. That'd be cool. <laughs> I really like that one. That'd be interesting. Yeah. See, the right. only thing I keep saying in my head is a rhino and an otter. <laughs> That's it. That's, and I'm like... Rotter? A rotter. Like, a ro- <laughs> yeah, a rotter. It's, okay, I really like rhinos. They're like yeah. the firefighters of the jungle. Like, if they oh, see yeah. a fire, they'll run and stomp it out. And I Is like it? otters because they're... Fu- yeah. So do you and want like, a, a and rhino? I elephants, but rhino. I like rhino and elephants are too close. I don't know. A rhino so with be, an otter tail? Yeah, would it be a rhino <laughs> with an otter tail yeah. or, like, a otter body with a rhino head and a tail? Like, how would you so do hard. it? Because I like the noises otters make. So it's really hard for me. 
So like can they have rhino okay, with so it's a otter rhino head, head and okay. an otter body with okay. the otter voice box? Oh, oh there we go. What about proportions? What are we talking rhino proportions? <laughs> are we the, talking otter proportions? The otter the otter is the size of the rhino. It's a huge oh, ass otter. Oh my god. Oh. Big? So it's like it's, a bear. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a bear. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Oh my god. All right, one the more damn it can make. One more random question. If you could take any animal and shrink it down to the size of a cat as a pet, what animal would it be? An elephant. An elephant? I actually picked rhino was mine. Like a little yeah. rhino running around the house. Like, <laughs> that would be awesome Danger. Oh, Danger. Gosh. I picked a deer because I would like to have like a little, like a little mini deer. Audrey Hepburn, the actress, actually owned a deer as a pet. Yeah. I saw one, I saw one on a camping trip. It jumped out of somebody's motor home. It was their, their pet. It was their the motor deer. home. The deer were staying there. They were right. also camping. <laughs> like, a fire. Fire. I, had a, I had a friend in Ohio. Her dad raised and breeded reindeer and sold them. He had a whole farm. Like, he had, like, 30 reindeer on That's his property. That's like a real yes. Ohio thing to do. Hey don't, <laughs> hey, don't judge Midwest happenings, okay? Come on. <laughs> I know. I'm, like, seriously. <laughs> I mean, anybody I know. Like, France are coming to life. Anybody I've ever met that lives in Ohio has told me how awful of a place it is. See, Just I like loved Ohio. I, I mean, I live in Texas sense. now, but I love I loved Ohio. There wasn't a lot to do, but it was it was a pretty good place for me. We lived up near Cleveland, though, so. That's where we grew up. Not so hard to do. yeah, my, we weren't no, so rural. No, yeah, no. Really. <laughs> no. <laughs> there, what? There wasn't so what? There was a lot to do in Cleveland. What? No, there's not. There's more now. But what about you, Shay? What animal would you shrink down for a pet? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I've just always. I'm literally so obsessed with monkeys. I so, I like. I, it would be a gorilla. It would have okay. to be a mini gorilla. I really want a dragon, but I feel like that's not an animal. I know. Octopus. I, I don't know if you guys watch Game of Thrones, but, like, I'm so obsessed with Khaleesi and her no dragon. No spoilers. I know. I haven't seen the last two episodes, so shush. Um, I watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, I... I, I don't really, watch it either. I want to be Khaleesi. I think since everybody else watches yeah. it, I'm kind of like... Eh. Yeah, me too. I kind of am like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so you want a gorilla dragon? A gorilla dragon, yeah. There we go. A gorilla a with dragon one. wings? A dragon wing? Well, honestly, Dracula. if you think of a gorilla dragon, so it's a gorilla with dragon wings, is actually the adult version of TNT's gorilla with monarch butterfly oh, wings. When it's yeah. four, it's a gorilla with monarch yeah. butterfly wings, and then as it gets older, it grows dragon wings. And then it brings yeah, fire like and shit, too. Oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I, like, I like where you guys take that. Oh, <laughs> Do you guys believe in ghosts? Um, Have you had any paranormal activity happen? I am your- literally the biggest scaredy cat in the whole entire world. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't know. I haven't given a lot I'm of afraid of the dark. I'm legit. So can I be honest? If I'm in the dark and I'm like feel scared, and this is gonna like what a loser. Since I was younger, <laughs> I literally sing a song, and all this song is is I go Jesus, 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 <laughs> as I'm running in the dark until I get Honestly. to the light. So you yell Jesus until you get to the light. Yeah. That's kind of like a, is that a metaphor for like life, like the life cycle? <laughs> You're coming from the dark to the light, saving it, and Jesus is maybe. <laughs> Whatever, whatever I'm doing else. it like if I say it, I'm like I. And this I, is the girl that always tells me I'm not religious. I'm not religious. I, I'm not religious. I'm. I don't have a religion, but I do believe in God. I'm spiritual, and I think what I believe is totally different than what everybody else believes. But your walk is your walk, and mine is mine. You do That's you. Right. But you know what? That song has kept you safe forever. Then. I know. <laughs> I got eaten by a monster. <laughs> you never had like a, a a painting fall off the wall or doors that flush in toilets, doors that close or open. Did you say a door that flushed the toilet? Yeah, door that flushed the toilet. <laughs> that would really freak me the fuck out. <laughs> yes. Then I would believe in ghosts. I oh, have wow. sure. What about aliens? Either you've been abducted. I haven't been abducted, but I do think aliens are real. Oh, okay. Man, Has anyone ever told to you somebody. ghost stories that you know, like friends, family, anything told you a ghost story about they lived in a house that was had like weird shit going on or? Nope. Nope. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. yeah, me neither. I really I'm thought more, this would be a bigger segment. <laughs> I'm more, uh, I'm more agnostic about it. Like if I had 
solid proof I would believe, but I don't that's, not believe, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. I'm very, like, if I, I have to, like, have some sort of, like, tangible evidence or, like, I, I have to have something to be able to, like, grasp my hands on to, like... Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not a big speculator about anything. I'm, I'm more of, like, a fact kind of person. Like, you show me a fact, I'll believe it, but I'm not going to yeah. believe, like, what a myth, you know, so to speak, so... And yeah. I, uh, I, I have, like, recollection of, like, night paralysis mixed with, like, bad dreams and shit like that, but I can't really think anything. I did a lot of drugs during my, during my younger years, so that might have something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to search dream. my memory bank to see if I have something. Yeah, something going on. Kyra so. does have alien porn. I do. How's that work exactly? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, I was an alien. I got, like, Galera contact so my eyes were all black and I was an alien queen and then like I made him fuck me I abducted the human and I needed his seed so I could um <laughs> produce a large brood of That's new awesome. aliens so hey, was this a request or something you thought of it was a custom oh that's awesome man that's it was awesome. a lot of fun and I take my shit really serious oh, so like I bought like I know about the whole process as she's like preparing for it. I get a play by play. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You have to do any adjustments to the Orify in order to. My Orify? <laughs> yeah, for the <laughs> any makeup or costume. No, I didn't orify. do anything like that. But the way I filmed, I filmed it with I got like this silver um, backdrop and then I put a purple light in so my skin automatically looked a different color. Okay. okay. That, that's so creative. Look at you. Like, you should, like, should get into, like, set production and shit, you know, just trying to work. I, like I said, I wouldn't hate being a producer. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you should get in a job where you just help girls make custom videos. Then you can, like, set up the sets and all that shit whenever you get tired of making them yourself. Then they can pay you to do their set design. That'd be a good idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're like, I'm down. <laughs> so, but you guys always ask everyone what the highlight of their you know, career is. So I was wondering what the highlight of your, what highlight, and, it, and even if you have, if you have a low light you want to throw in there too, we can get the be, the both ends of the spectrum. I I don't, wouldn't say it was like a highlight, but I, I mean, I remember going to AVN last year, um, oh, the adult, awesome. the adult um, video network awards. We didn't actually go to the awards, but there's a conference that's like right. the whole week. And I remember landing in Vegas and just being like, I'm a sex worker. I'm, I can be a sex worker. I'm Shay. I can tell everybody I'm a sex worker. And everybody was really, really accepting. I met some really, really awesome girls. Um, the whole experience was really like freeing, if that makes sense. And so it, it really, like, I'm really looking forward to going again this year. Um, Kyra's going to be with me again this year and we're going for the podcast. We're not going for ourselves. We're going for the podcast this year. So that should be fun. But just, just be that like free feeling of being able to, to, I mean, you're, you're surrounded by 10,000 sex workers and everybody's just so open and honest about it. And everybody's like half naked and filming porn and, you know, masturbating in weird places. And yeah, you need to be at AVN. Well, uh, I imagine it felt great because you, like you said, you're so reserved and hidden most of the time. It was like the one time you, it just didn't matter. You could just, it is what it is. I'm open and free as I want to be. And everyone else is like awesome, you know? Yeah. 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 And everybody was like, whatever I am too. You know, so mm -hmm. I remember the the um the taxi driver was like or our Uber or whatever was like, yeah, like, what is it all about? Tell me. And, you know, you, and you still want to kind of be cautious because you're like, OK, like, I can't tell these people too much information, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you're like just totally open about being a sex worker and and proud of it. You know, it's it, it was a cool feeling. That's sweet. What about you, Kyra? Mm, meeting me. Yeah, that was nice, but I've known her for a long time, so I'm over it. <laughs> um, it's hard because, like, I want to say, like, the highlight was um, something monetary, but, like, I've had so many good things happen to me. I feel like I've met a lot of really great people, and, like, I'm getting ready to go to my first convention in November. <laughs> and so I'm super stoked about going to this convention. I've never been on a plane before. I've only left my state once. And so, like, I'm pretty nervous, but I think that that's going to be a huge experience for me. I'll get to meet Shay in person, and we'll get mm -hmm. to kind of have a good time, I assume. 
The um, process of getting her on the plane so far has been interesting, and she's not even <laughs> there yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 How, 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 many months, right. how many months away is this? It's no- in early November. Oh, so just so here, yeah, so not too long. Oh, man, no. so now you have only a few weeks to, to uh, think about it and <laughs> dwell on it and all well, that Well, and shit. the thing is, too, is, like, we already paid for housing, so it's not like I can, like, back out and I'm getting ready to buy my plane ticket, so it's like at this point... They're staying in a house with ten other girls. Yeah. So oh wow, be that'll be awesome. Well, we're going for the podcast this time too because we figured like <laughs> it would be silly to go to this event and for us to film content because like for me, my girl girl stuff does not sell very well. Like mm-hmm. that's not what my clientele wants to see me do. They don't really like seeing me do the girl girl stuff, and so it's like it seems silly to do that. And so why not go to the convention and have stickers and have pins and have like. A mic hooked up to our phone so we can do live interviews. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Because like, that's our demographic. Like, people want to know about themselves, and, like, they get to hear things, and it's nice to be able to listen to something and be able to relate to it. I was going to say, and you also can get your podcast out to other adult industry people that aren't cam models. You know exactly. what I mean? So it's, yeah. you know, you know, porn stars or whatever else, you know, that may, who, who they have no idea it's out there. They're like, oh, shit. All right, I'll go on their podcast and talk about the adult film, film industry or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah. And we've had really good luck, like getting guests. We haven't had a hard, we haven't had much difficulty getting people to come on, but we definitely are like in with the cam, like mm-hmm. the industry. We we talk about on our podcast the umbrella of po- of sex work is so big now that you know we definitely are in like the cam girl part of it. And so getting guests that are outside of cam girls has been a little more difficult because they don't know us and they're not trusting mm-hmm. of us per se. Or So we get a lot of cam models that listen, but not so much the other aspects of sex work. So right, producing right. And, and it's so big. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think that, I mean, I think that could be a really big, good thing for you guys. I mean, just the exposure. I mean, mm-hmm. shit, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. We're hoping so. But I don't really have a low either. I guess uh, last July I had a cyst and I couldn't work for like six weeks because I had to have surgery and stuff. Mm. And so like it was like I wasn't making any money, but l- I literally couldn't do anything about it. Right. So that right. kind of blew. Yeah. But yeah. so let me ask deal- you a random question: What do cam girls do when it's like that time of the month? Do you just not work that 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 week or what? Like or do you I have work literally had it or? One period this year. I have endometriosis, and I've had one period this whole entire year, and it was, like, oh, three days well. long. So, for me, it doesn't no matter. Downside. But my advice to girls that do have, get their periods is do um, spank In- shows, do tit yeah. shows, do blowjob t- shows. High Tachi shows where there's exactly. no insertion. Um, a lot of girls use, like, um, soft cuts, I think they are. Or you um, can take um, yeah. sea foam sponges. Yeah. And wet them down a little bit and you can shove them upside you. That's a porn tray secret. No, there you go. Awesome. Yeah. I was just, I was, just, I mean, you know, I mean, it's something that monthly is for a extended period of time and you work, if, you know, some of those girls work consistently daily, all hours and hours, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, had a, I had a, oh. I had a hysterectomy 11 years ago, so I don't, like, I don't, like, I forget. You don't have that, that problem either. I forget yeah. it happens. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. So luckily and for I'm, you guys, you really don't have that issue because. Yeah. Both of you don't really but have periods. An, so. Yeah, it is an issue for girls yeah. that do. So yeah, so sorry that happens to you, ladies. Yeah, sorry. yeah, right. Sorry about yeah. your luck. But yeah, I right. Never yeah, have nice another shit. kid, so there's that, and you right. can. So yeah. right, yeah. yeah, you take the good with the bad, right? Right. You know, it's yeah. now. Do you have for if, if if there happens to be any person listening right now that wants to get into this industry, what is any sort of advice you would give them? How to get in? What they should do? Anything? Go You're to gonna sexworkbb.com and listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You'll learn a lot there. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Just go listen to our podcast. In my head, I was like, we talk about stuff. If you want to yeah. do it, do research before you start and decide to invest in a good camera. Invest in a good camera and good lighting when you start because that's really important. Okay. Do you and guys have, per- like, a light setup for when you do shows and stuff? I mean, that's, like, an external, like, movie set type light setup sort of deal? Yeah, a mm-hmm. lot of us use ring lights or... I have a box light. light. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically, if you want to start camming, get, make sure you get some sort of, like, professional lighting equipment to help you out so you aren't in the dark or whatever. Yeah. Well, and be mentally prepared, too, that this job is not easy. It sounds easy because you're, like, quick money. It's not quick money. 
It's going to take a long time. you got to be consistent. And you have to realize, like, I've been sna- – I don't Snapchat a lot on the weekends because my kids are home from school. But, like, I have to Snapchat and I have to, like, talk to people constantly. I have to be on social media constantly. I need to be promoting my videos. I need to be uploading to sites to make sure my videos stay at the top. Like, it's you never of- really get to step away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also be prepared – uh, for the stigmas that go with it. N- know what you're getting into. Um, a lot of girls, like, people will record our shows and then upload them on the Internet, and the girls are like, one of my shows are recorded, and I, I'm on the Internet now naked, and I, I didn't know that was going to happen. And, it, it, yeah, you're out there, and you're going to be out there, and it, it could be there for a really long time. Um, and there's girls who have lost custody of their children. There's girls who have not been able to get jobs. There's girls who, I mean, there's a lot of negativity that goes around it that you are putting yourself at the risk to. Um mm-hmm. So just be aware that that is real and can happen so that if it does happen to you, you're not like, I mean, I remember when my video got put up on Pornhub, I had no clue. And I was like, uh, what, n- now what? <laughs> you know, like you're, you're in shock. Um, mm-hmm. so, so know the risk you're taking. You might not ever be able to get a job doing, you know, some things because. Teaching. Right. You know, people, and one of the things is doing this, people, some people will assume that like you're some sort of sexual deviant because you do this stuff. And so yeah, they just assume be prepared. the worst of you. Yeah. Right. So have your mental preparedness as much as your, your, you know, your, your physical Equipment. and hardware and all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And have a thick skin. I mean, we deal with a lot of really great people, but we deal with a lot of really, really crappy people too. Right, so, right. um, yeah. yeah and, you t- and you touched on, you you're doing it all the time. And I think that's true with any entertainment sort of thing. Like even like with this podcast, I mean, I'm constantly on Twitter replying to people that reply to me. If you, if you don't do that, if you don't engage People don't know. I mean, you have to push yourself out. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. you know, especially when yeah. you first start and no one knows who the hell you are. Why are they going to listen to you or watch your show if they have no idea who the hell you are? You know, right. so. Well, I think her and I were fortunate because we had already been, like, combined when we started doing it, we had, like, 11,000 followers from our personal like sex mm. work accounts. And so we made the podcast and we're like, hey, we're doing this podcast. Come follow us. Come yeah. listen. So without that, I it was it easier was, for us probably to start the podcast than it was for you guys. Where? Oh yeah, yeah, I had yeah, I had, I had no prior experience. I had no hookups. I had no whatever. I mean, I built, I did everything from the ground up, man. I just put in a bunch of damn networking, and I'm constantly, constantly reaching out to people uh-huh. about being on the show. You know, you have to, or people are going to mm-hmm. forget who you are. So yep. yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. You become a marketer and a. I mean, we, we're, that's why when people ask what we do, we're like, well, we're a marketer, graphic designer, cam girl, like, I mean, <laughs> what do you want us to be? We, we pretty much do it. So. Mm-hmm. Right. And people don't think about that. Even for, you know, for you guys, they don't want to think about, you need someone to put together your site and do your graphics, your videos. Yeah. You don't know how to do it or aren't willing to learn. That's a lot of money you got to shell out or find other people to do well, it for free. Well, and who are you going to find to do it for you? Right. Right. I mean, people aren't, like, inclined to be like, oh, I'll make some graphics for your store. Like, there are models that pay people. Like, they've done it because there's no niche for it. Right. So. Right. Absolutely. TNT, you got anything else? Uh, you got anything else on your on your questions? Oh, man, I'm good. I'm just All enjoying. Right. He got his for- <laughs> He got his joke in, so he's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's been playing that shit. <laughs> Four I weeks I've been too. holding that, he said. <laughs> I know. Seriously. Oh, uh, so. No, but for, guys, I, I mean, I had a blast. I, I really thank you guys for coming on. Yeah, me too. Um, Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Do you so. guys want to tell everyone where to find you on, uh, your, your podcast, where you guys can cam, your Twitter, anything you want to give, just let everybody know so they can find you. Yeah. Well, let yeah. me get a pen and paper, though. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, no, I don't, I think that her and I both on this level, we don't really use the podcast to promote our own personal like videos and clip making that we don't do it for that we do it for the podcast like we're really passionate about this but since he shouted out your videos there's probably a bunch of people curious where to get your videos go to kyravids.com kyravids.com and then how do they follow you on twitter for the podcast or your personal or whatever my personal is at kyra k-y-r-a kane k-a-n-e m-f-c that's my uh personal and then Shay's is, you want me to do it or you want me to do it? Go for it. 
at Shay, S-H-A-Y-E underscore Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, three mm-hmm. on Twitter. And yep. then our sex work BB is at sex work BB. And it's pretty easy. You can find it's it. Just the letter BB. B-B. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, well, uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for, uh, for doing the interview and then we'll be right back. And we are back on the Crazy Town Podcast, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed the final part of the interview with the Sex Work BB Podcast. What do you think, TNT? I thought that was a great interview. For us, for it being our first yeah. interview, I thought it was it, it went really well. I enjoyed myself very much with that. Hey, yeah, those girls those, are awesome. Those, are, those women were great. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're very cool. They're very chill. Go go check out the Sex Work BB Podcast at Sex Work BB, the two letter That's B, letter B. And uh, it, it, the podcast is actually very entertaining. If you don't know anything about like the sex work industry, they it's 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 a whole different world, man. It's it's definitely something to check out. I mean, it is. It's like it's so much. It's so much different than what like the normal vanilla person would have any idea about. Vanilla, vanilla people. We call those Caucasian Americans. <laughs> I'm not getting into race terms, bro. I'm talking about Uh-oh. vanilla as in boring. As in, normal, oh. as in like straight sex, as in you know what I mean, like walk the line, don't look, think, or you know what I mean, don't have any sort of like. Okay, I, I understand. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. The term Not, vanilla person just kind of you know. Is that? I've got. I've got a lot of vanilla is, is friends, that what, and that I won't have call anybody. White people when when I'm not around, you call us vanilla. <laughs> No, but if I caught anybody else calling my <laughs> white friends with the shut up, Jonah, you know, it's not about me. It's about you. But, and hey, you just cat. ragged on me hard for my, my comma placement when I was talking about handicapped people. So I had to get you back for fucking. Uh, uh no. But anyways everybody, we uh that is all the time we have for today. The the finale episode part two actually it has nothing to do with finale, I'm just talking shit. Episode one point five, the second part of the season premiere of season two. We did it. TNT, oh. we made it to season two. We did. That's man. the hardest part. Is it? Yeah. We could have quit. Yeah, we could have. Yeah. But thanks to all these wonderful fans reaching out. And I'm glad that you're so, uh, you're, what do you call that, motivated, almost to the point of annoyance. <laughs> I know, right? I'm sorry, sir. I <laughs> no, know. no, dude, it's good. I like well, it. you know, I've realized that in order to get people on the show and in order to do stuff, I have to be so persistent. So I have to just be, like, on top of it. Now I'm not just doing myself. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's like I'm like... Hey, TNT, you ready to record? Hey, this guy, are you going to come on the show? Hey, this guy, when can we do this? Can we do it this day? All right. It's, it's a lot of work, man. But you know what? I love it. It's a lot of fun. I'm super passionate about it now. So, you know, it's great. But uh, you want to go ahead and tell everybody where they can find your non-updated YouTube channel? Listen, listen, TNT Dynamite. I'm on the YouTubes, TNT Dynamite, TNT D-I-N-O, you know how to spell it. I'm also on, uh, I'm on Twitter. Um... You can probably find me r- right next to uh, the Miz. We, we... <laughs> the Miz, like yeah. a wrestler? Yeah, dude. Me and him, we're basically, you know, like I got his physique. Yeah, and he is. He is I, from Ohio, not too far where from where we're from. So I guess we're kind of all the same person. Yeah, yeah. I look better though. Um, we're basically the same person. So yeah, just go to his, and you'll find me. Easy. <laughs> just go. You heard it here first, folks. Go to the Miz's Twitter, and you'll see a picture of TNT Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> so all right everybody um that is all the time that we have so please if uh you would follow us on twitter at the crazy town pot if you don't uncle rico is gonna throw your football over the mountains oh wow i actually know that reference <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh itunes review us uh five stars would be much appreciated but if you don't feel we're five stars i'll take what you give me uh, reach out to us. Tell us what you think about us. Tell us what you hate about the show. Uh, SoundCloud.com forward slash Crazy Town Podcast. Actually, it's just Crazy Town Podcast. And as I always say, the cornucopia of continuous information about the show, thecrazytown.com. But for TNT Dynamite, 
And for Jonas, we are out.